Hi, welcome to VS Solutions. We have reinvented the integration between Microsoft Dynamics Nav and Outlook. For more information, look on our website www.vssolutions.nl. Our solutions work with all Microsoft Dynamics Nav versions from 3.6 to Nav 2015, and they work with all Outlook versions as of 2007 and it requires minimal changes in your existing software. Today I want to talk to you about the Outlook Synchronization Handler. The Synchronization Handler synchronizes data from NAV to Outlook and or back. It comes in two versions, the one-way basic version or the two-way extended version. For both versions, offline synchronization is possible, which means that users do not need to log on to NAV or Outlook in order to get their data synchronized. We've put all the business rules inside NAV, which makes it easy to make modifications. That I will show you in this video. And there's a wide choice of conflict handling in the setup if you choose the extended version. We get a lot of questions from developers. How does it work, this handler? That's the subject of this demo. I will give you a technical overview of the synchronization handler for developers so that you can see how the flexibility can work for you and how you can implement business rules for your customers. Let's start the vision. As you can see, I have created a new menu option for the synchronization handler. But first, I will prepare some data to be synchronized. Let's go to Shortcuts and Contacts. And let's take Matthew Hink. And I will add myself as a salesperson. So basically, two things happened here. First of all, I'm now the salesperson of Matthew Hink. And second, there's a refreshed date timestamp. Our synchronization handler uses this date timestamp to synchronize those data which, have, which has been modified. Which means that we do not always synchronize all data, but only data that has been modified from a certain time period. This is for performance issues, of course. Let's close this contact card and go to our menu. As I described, it requires minimal changes in your software. Our synchronization handler and our other solutions come with their own set of tables and forms, including the setup and buffer tables. Let's open up a sync user card where I added myself as a user. All users that want their data to be synchronized with Outlook need to be created as a sync user. A per user, you can set up if he or she is allowed to synchronize appointments, contacts, or tasks. If I look at my folders, you can see that a user can define his or her own folders within Outlook to synchronize data to. In this particular case, I have created in Outlook a new folder, contact from nav, because I don't want my contact from nav all in between my other contacts. I want to keep them separate. If I look at Outlook, I've got my contact persons, and I got a new folder, contact from nav. So this is where you set this up. You can easily click on the assist edit button and select a folder in Outlook. As you can see, we have two folder paths. One for the user and one for the admin. This path is used when you do batch synchronizing, when another user has to access the folders of, in this case, my Outlook calendar contacts and tasks. In this, in this demo, they are the same because I work locally now. Let's wind this a little bit. There's a, func there's a function called update sync buffer. We work with a buffer. 
we populate the buffer from nav with data and then we process the buffer to Outlook. This gives you flexibility in two ways. The first flexibility is that you can populate this buffer any way you want, which means you can populate it with contacts as we do, or you can choose to synchronize customers or vendors, employees or any bespoke table can be synchronized with Outlook. And the second step is that we process the buffer records, which means that you can add data from NAV to any field in Outlook. That I will show you later. Let's first start up this update sync buffer process. As you can see, there's an indicator here that shows me that one or more records have been created in the sync buffer table. And there he is, Matthew Hink as a contact person. It's an insert because this is the first time I have selected this Matthew Hink as a contact. I'll show you later how the system knows that it should be an insert and not a modification. The next step is to process the buffer records. Of course, when you implement this with customers, you do not bother your users with uh, a manual that tells them to go to the setup card and start the function there and then process. You will simply build one form with one button which executes both uh, functions consequently and then the synchronization is completed. But for this demo, I wanted to show you which steps our process takes. So let's process the buffer. You see the record is gone, it's processed. If I look at Outlook, I can see that in my contact from Nav, my Matthew Hink has appeared. What's also interesting to see is that I can also see which company from Nav this Matthew Hink came from. So if you work in an environment where you have multiple companies in your Nav database, you can use the sync connector to sync all contacts from all companies into your Outlook folders. And in Outlook, you can see if you want where they came from. Well, this is where the user interface stops because a user basically doesn't do anything more. Data is changed, appointments are made, tasks are made and they are synchronized. <laughs> let's go to the update designer and let's see how this happened. If I open up the code unit that's responsible for the processing of the buffer records and I'll find the function process contacts there it is you can see that data from the contact is linked to properties in Outlook and this is where our, our Outlook synchronization handler comes in because we created a new automation that gives you full access to all the properties and methods of the Outlook items. In this case, a contact. Let's open up a contact item. There you see the methods of this contact item. And you see all the properties, all the fields that are available in Outlook and they now are available to you to link them to any data type that you want in Navision. So the first step, the first part of your flexibility is how to fill the buffer with which records. And the second flexibility kicks in here, where you can link any table, any field to any field in Outlook. And this is a contact item, and the same is with task item and appointment items. Let's close this. And Let's show you what happens more. After the, the, the records have been processed, the buffer records, the system has created a sync item where it stored which contact for which user has which entry ID in Outlook. So this is where the system knows which synchronization items are new, should be inserted in Outlook, and which should be modified. 
And as you can see, it's kept with the user ID. So in theory, and we have implemented this for one customer, you can synchronize the same contact to different users if you want. And every time a synchronization is completed, a log entry is created where systems managers can go into and see if something went wrong and where it went wrong on what contact. So basically a third flexibility is what you have now is that you can debug the whole process in case of things go wrong after you made uh, certain changes. Well, I hope you found this interesting and you found um, ideas on how to implement this with your customers. Feel free to contact us at www.vssolutions.nl to fill in the contact form. This is also the place where you can download fact sheets and you find our price list. Thank you for watching.